Association. So uh, thank you, Hugo, and it's, it's great to be here in London, and, and lunch is coming up, so we'll try to keep it as short as possible. Um, just a few words about Sweetwood before I start. So we're an Israel-focused fund of funds. Our goal is really to invest in many of the entrepreneurs you've seen here today uh, by allocating the top managers that we see in Israel. Um, in my presentation, I just want to talk a little bit about the future trends that we're seeing today and where is the world evolving in terms of the venture capital ecosystem. So I think, you know, I want to start off with talking about the IT revolution and where do we really stand in this revolution. If you look historically at how revolutions are being generated, so generally any technological revolution goes through three different phases. We start with a prosperous bubble, then we go to a pullback phase, and then we go to a golden age. We've seen this um, with the industrial revolution, we've seen this happen with the steel revolution, and the phases work as follows. In the prosperous bubble, we're seeing a new technology emerge, and we're seeing a lot of hype around this technology. A lot of people investing a lot of capital in that technology, but sometimes the technology is simply not evolved into that phase. Then comes a the pullback phase, because we're seeing this prosperous bubble sort of burst at that stage of time, because we, the, the people that put in all the capital understand that the technology is not yet evolved enough for the, um, for the mass, product, mass, mass usage. And then we enter this golden age where usually in the pullback phase, the technology catches up to all the hype. And then we're seeing this golden age of investments. And we've seen this now in the IT revolution. We started in the 1990s with the internet mania. We saw a lot of capital go to the internet, which was a very promising technology, but really was not very evolved. And that led to the dot-com bust. And since the dot-com bust, we moved into this phase of golden age of investments. And we really believe that technology and information technology to lay is a great place to be invested at because we believe that it's a, it's a great time that will last for many, many decades to come. Now, within the IT revolution, I think we're seeing a very interesting trend where we're shifting from a consumer-oriented technology where some of these big consumer-facing technologies are reaching kind of a level of scale. So we're looking at the Airbnbs, the Ubers, the Amazon in the world, and we're moving to a technology that's focused on machines. Okay, so we're seeing the emergence of sectors specifically in mobility and in industry 4.0, medical technologies where machines are actually taking the center stage of innovation. And this innovation is supported by new underlying technologies such as artificial intelligence, Internet of Things, drones, sensors, blockchain, and cybersecurity. Um, and we're going to see a lot of innovations that relate to these core technologies. They'll be mostly focused on developing the machine and the machine capabilities. Now, um, one of the, the sentences that was coined by Martin Dreesen a few years ago talks about the fact that software is, is eating the world. And I think today, software is still eating the world and it's eating it at a much larger pace than we ever anticipated or we've ever seen. Um, we're seeing it with the large tech players. The large tech players are shifting into new areas that are non-technological in their core, but they're bringing in tech into these areas. If we look at Google that's developing the uh, autonomous vehicle, Amazon that acquired Whole Foods, um, Intel, Mobileye, obviously um, a great example of Israel. And we also saw it with Samsung that acquired Armand um, about two years, uh, that invested and in, acquired Armand a few years ago. But we're also seeing it from the other side. We're seeing non tech players that are acquiring tech. Today, non tech players understand they need to acquire tech in order to survive. They understand that they can't develop it in house. And if we actually look at who's making most of the tech acquisitions in the world, we're seeing that from 2012 until 2017, a huge increase in the proportion of non-tech players doing tech acquisitions. And we think this is gonna to continue to grow because these tech uh, player, non-tech players, if they're not gonna innovate, they're not gonna survive. And if we wanna look at it from, from a brief Israeli perspective, if we look in 2017, we're seeing that three of the largest 10 M&A's acquisitions were kind of cross um, acquisition. So we saw Intel going into Mobileye, into the automotive. We saw Continental acquiring Argus. And we saw Cigna Jewelries acquiring R2Net. The next trend that I want to talk about, and I, I think this is one of the largest trends that's impacting venture globally, um, is the fact that we're seeing an, an implosion of unicorns in the end of the world. Um, but what's interesting about the fact is not only are we seeing more unicorns, we're seeing companies that are staying private for much, much longer. And this is a real challenge for the VC model as it is. Um, we, the VC model centers around the fact that you will exit a company after a period of 10 years. 
But if all of a sudden we're building these large companies that are built to last, we're seeing an Uber with a $40 million valuation, and it's still in the market, and it's not looking, it's talking about an IPO, but is it going to happen next few years? That's a challenge for a fund that's designed to return capital to investors after 10 years. Now, we're seeing, at the same time, new players that are coming in to fill out that gap and provide more capital. So in the past, companies used to go to an IPO market when they're ready. Today, they're not, they're not liquidating. They're raising new capital from new growth players that are in the market. So we saw the vision fund of SoftBank. Sequoia just raised a record uh, $6 billion fund to fuel exactly these growth investments. And CalPERS, which is one of the largest um, pension funds in the world, has actually decided that they would no longer invest through funds. They would go and invest directly in startups. Um, now, how do venture funds adopt to this growing trend? What did they need to do in order to be in a place where they can still provide liquidity for investors, um, but still invest in these billion dollar companies that are gonna stay around for 15 years? So the best example is, is the secondary transactions. And this is the new move of venture capital, in our view, really need to adapt today in order to gain early liquidity for investors. So they need to liquidate through those quasi IPO rounds. When one of these soft bank division fund comes in, that is the opportunity of the venture fund to sell. So when you look at an example like Uber, if we actually look at how the deal was structured, the latest round by SoftBank, we saw that the vast majority was actually secondary sales by the largest VC funds that invested in Uber from the beginning. So we can look at Benchmark or Menlo Ventures, which actually liquidated most of their position and still left a few, um, some shareholdings to provide for future benefits uh, if the company does IPO. And, and as always, I think the Israeli angle is, is, is very important because we are looking in Israel. As, as was stated here today many, many times, Israel is growing into a scale-up nation. And more than ever before, we're seeing tremendous amounts of capital going towards growth stage investments. If you actually look at the growth of capital invested in Israel, you'll see that the vast majority in 2017, for example, actually went to growth stage. And we are seeing Israeli companies adjust, Israeli funds, sorry, adjust to it and actually utilizing these secondary transactions. So we saw the best example that we have today on the market is, is Viola Ventures, previously Carmel Ventures, that essentially sold a huge part of its position in Payoneer as part of the latest round in the company. Um, so we believe these are some of the biggest trends that will impact us in, in, in venture in the upcoming years. And um, thank you very much.